I had the chance to attend a next gen training class called the Boot Camp on HSM Works. And one of the things that came up is how quickly you can get to G code. And you guys have asked for me to slow down. We're going to do the opposite. I want to show you how I work at job speed, full speed ahead. So we're going to whip up a quick pair of soft jaws and I'm going to go at my speed. I'm probably not going to talk through it so that you can see how quickly we can go from nothing to creating a CAD model to creating soft jaws with G code. Then I'll walk back through it and go a little bit more slowly and talk a little bit more through it. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Sketch, front plane, rectangle, dimension it six by one, and then just sketch another one. That's the other jaw. And I'll put them an inch and a half apart. Perfect. Features extrude boss 1.75, flip like so. Sketch a circle here. We'll say that's three inches. And what I will do is create a center line from here to here. Put a point on it right there and then coincident. Insert reference geometry coordinate point system like there. Go to cam, new job, parametric from solid, and 2D adaptive clearing tool. 31. Model will be this and this. Stock will be that and that. From selection here. Perfect. Make sure we're leaving a few thou. We are. Right click. Create derivative operation 2D contour. And we'll come in and clean that up. And we don't want it to, we don't want it to propagate. So we'll clear that. We'll just select that line. We're done. Simulate. Simulate. Comes in, does a great 2D adaptive roughing or clearing operation, and then comes back in with tool 31 and does a cleanup pass. So on camera, uh, I'm looking at the clock right now. We just turned four minutes. It'll edit it down shorter than that because there's always some wasted footage in the beginning. It's that quick, folks. I love it. Here's the crazy thing. There's faster ways to do it that I haven't even gotten into yet, and I can't wait to share with you guys in terms of saving more operations, templates, um, better settings that I haven't necessarily gone in and messed with yet. So that's why I love this. When we quote a job, seven times out of ten, I will bank the model for it and actually do rough tool pass. The crazy thing is that the 3D milling function, which is not free, um, but we use, makes it even easier to create complex tool paths. And it gives me an idea how to quote the job. It just, it makes me so confident in how I run the business side of this. The 2D thing, which is what we just used, is free if you own SolidWorks, folks. If you own SolidWorks, in my opinion, there's no reason not to be using this. Now, if you're a smaller shop out there and you want the 3D tool paths, which we didn't get into today, guess what? Use them in Fusion 360. That's the amazing thing about it. So I know that's a quickie, but I just wanted you guys to get this. What, what happened was there was a fellow in this class, really nice guy, debating on where to go with buying machines or outsourcing it. And I think he thought it would take, you know, multiple, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes to get to G code. And what I was trying to show is no, it, a lot of times I can go from a basic part to G code and I said, I said, you know, like 200 seconds, you know, three minutes or something. So uh, let's walk through that slowly and I'll show you some of those settings. So 
2D adaptive clearing. I like my um, Tool 31, which is a quarter inch two flute. Now, what we want to do, because it's an open pocket, to me, this is actually a hair unintuitive in HSM. But what you say is you say, this is the model. And then the stock that we need to remove is this stuff here. And you uncheck machine cavities. That's what gives us, oh, I got to fix my, and I have screwed this up. I've got to go back in and change the default settings from this plane, oops, not there, from this plane to that plane. So that actually took me extra unnecessary time. And you can adjust the depths and set overs as, def as default if you want. A lot of times you can have them in a situation that leaves them acceptable as is. That's your 2D adaptive roughing operation, which is great. Now, to use the same settings and geometries and so forth, we just right click and do derivative operation for a 2D contour and same tool. Now, I have a little bit of a problem here because I don't want to contour around the previous selection. So I've just got to clear that and I'll just choose that line, but I don't want it to propagate and I got to reverse it. So a few extra clicks there, not a huge deal, but I'll, get, I'll give it to you, a few extra clicks. And then I believe we are good and click OK. And I tell you, we just we actually just machined those this morning. You'll see them actually in a video that's coming up here in the next week or two. They look beautiful. So that's how easy it is, folks. Take care.